Good morning, good morning from the Jersey Shore. Dr. Gary here. We are dental practice brokers. We've been doing this for 11 years and I was a dentist for 25 years. We now have a staff of eight, including two CPA accountants. We are here to help you purchase a dental practice or to sell a dental practice, whether it's a small one or a large one. We have experience, significant number of experience. And more recently, we've been uh, with the DSO, Dental Support Organizations, we've been involved in several of those deals. So if you have a uh, larger practice, we can help you and they often will pay our commission and we can often get your legal fees reimbursed at closing if you work with my company, Healthcare Practice Sales, LLC. Our phone number is 201-663-0935. Our website is www.dental practice guide g-u-i-d-e dot com dentalpracticeguide.com our phone number is 201-663-0935 feel free to call us at any time we're here to help you we work 363 days a year we take our christmas and easter and you can generally reach us from 7 30 a.m in the morning east coast time till 9 30 p.m east coast time so we are available to you and we generally always pick up the phone. If not, we will get right back to you. Uh, we're never too busy that we can't take on new business or questions. If you have a practice, no matter what size it is, and you need some idea of an evaluation, call us. We could talk about it, give you some ideas, and uh, tell you what the current market is. Today's discussion... And the information we're about to give you is only for entertainment purposes. This is not legal advice, nor is it business advice. Today's discussion is, does the DSO contract they provide a fair and equitable contract? So let's get into this. We just had a deal we finished, very large, and some multi-million dollars. And uh, the contract that was provided from the DSO was a contract that I could say had plenty of holes in it. It wasn't that equitable, fair to the buyer, the seller, dentist. It was uh, something that really needed to be thoroughly reviewed, gone over. Fortunately, the seller had a very a solid dental practice attorney who does at least almost 30 deals a year for the last, I think, six, seven years. The contract had holes in it. The contract needed a lot of work. The contract was somewhat one-sided. And this was, uh, the contract was written by a very large DSO, a well-known DSO in the United States. And you would think after all this time, they would have worked out all the kinks in the contract. But no, it needed more work. It needed more, uh, it needed to be thoroughly reviewed, thoroughly negotiated. It wasn't easy. And there was a lot of areas, or you could call holes in it, that uh, needed work. We would have gotten nowhere, nowhere, without a qualified dental attorney. If any of you think you could do a DSO negotiation without a qualified, experienced dental attorney, forget it. You're gonna drive yourself crazy because you will be jeopardizing yourself. You'll be, um, you'll have a contract that's inadequate or it's one-sided. Every contract has to be negotiated for you as the seller to be fair to you. Now, most of the DSOs I work with, I really like, I enjoy working with them. I think they have, they're fair and equitable to the buyer, uh, to the seller, excuse me, you as the seller. Um, but even those contracts need to be reviewed and to be negotiated. So just don't think because they are a DSO and they've done this so many times that all they've got to do is just flip over their contract to you and your attorney and it's going to be a cakewalk. You can forget about that. All right. So we just completed one. It was a huge deal. 
It was not a great contract. It needed a lot of work. So the attorney worked on it, worked on a lot of negotiations back and forth, and finally it was um, finally it was completed. Uh, but it wasn't easy to do. Legal fees can run high. And when you're dealing with the DSO, you should be engaging your attorney early on. All right? Before the, you know, really do it before the, the letter of intent. Let him know what your plans are, what you want to do, and uh, what your thoughts are, what your uh, long-term gain uh, uh, wishes are. This is important to establish because you're going to sell to a DSO. Obviously, this is a very expensive sale and you've got to lay out ahead of time what sort of your expectations are. Um, sometimes, even before the DSO, if you're getting ready, the DSO is getting ready to give you a, uh, a letter of intent. Sometimes the two attorneys can at least chat with each other to open up certain basic lines of communication. Your attorney will make that decision if they want to do that or not. But there can be certain parameters set up with the DSO ahead of time to help in the uh, in this, this transition, this negotiation and so forth. We're gonna get into the some of the nuances and all the particulars of a DSO contract. It is so complicated. It's like, forget it. But we'll get it together, okay? We'll talk to you about it soon. Bye now.